I'm just gonna spitball this video. It's gonna be sort of like uh, my personal experience about running a business and some of the thoughts that I have about running a business as a content creator and YouTuber and things that I think would be valuable for someone to hear if they want to start a business on their own. One of the things that I hear a lot of people say when they are not, you know, in the position where they run their own business, but they really want to, is that they do not want to work for someone else. And therefore, they try to do as little as possible and they feel like it's soul draining and it sucks. There's just this tendency that people have to complain about the job that they currently have instead of actually doing something about it. But when you're running your own business, one of the things that struck me to begin with is that there's no one telling you what to do. It might sound like a fantastic thing, but it also requires an insane amount of discipline, work ethic, and dedication, because if no one tells you what to do, how do you actually know what to do? It might sound like a super simple thing, but I arrive here at the studio sometimes and think to myself, well, what am I going to do today? I have absolutely no clue. And if I don't do anything, I'm just gonna be sitting here spending my time not doing anything. And sometimes that can be a very good reset to sort of like re, you know, vitalize the creative spirit that we all need to have. But it's also a good reminder that being your own boss comes with a big responsibility. And running a business requires you to do a plethora of different things. You need to know where to put your focus and when you should put your focus on that thing and why you shouldn't focus on something else when you're focusing on that thing. And once you're doing that thing that you're putting your focus on, you already need to think about the next thing. At least that's sort of like the way that has been for me when I've been working as a YouTuber and content creator. And if you watch my previous video, I talked briefly about how I tried to provide value for the company that I was working on before I became a freelancer. And one of the important things about doing that, in my opinion, is that when you start to provide value for the company, then you also show a dedication to actually pursue things on your own. And running a business is just that. It's about pursuing things that you believe in on your own. And then hopefully somewhere along the way, there's gonna be people that believe in the vision that you have so that you can run a better business and create something bigger than what you initially started out with. I've been having my business now for a little bit over a decade and there's been a lot of different ups and downs. And one of the hardest things in my opinion was to know what kind of rate that I should have as a creator. And there's not gonna be any sort of like right or wrong answer to this because I think that it totally depends on where you are in your creative journey. Say for example that you are starting up a YouTube channel, then shooting a video for a friend of yours that is having a cool car might not actually be something that you would charge for because you can use that content for your own personal gain and also give that to your friend so that you both get a sort of like a benefit from it. But if a company reaches out to you and say, hey, we would like to have your skill and for you to make a video for us, then the first thing that I would consider is, okay, how much time is this going to take away from the thing that I actually want to do, which was back then my YouTube channel? And how much preparation and post editing work is this gonna require from me, except for actually shooting the thing that I'm about to shoot? When you start to factor in all of those things, then you sort of realize that your time is actually more than just being on location and trying to shoot the thing for your client. And that is also what you should charge for. And when you're running a business, start way higher than what you think you're gonna be able to get. Because if you start too high, then the client might be like, no, that's too expensive. You instantly have the upper hand and start asking them, well, what is your budget? Maybe we can discuss this price and see what you can compromise on. Because when you know your client's budget, it's gonna be way easier for you to know if you actually want to do this gig or if you should look for something else. I've had a lot of companies come to me and say, hey, Peter, we love your stuff and we'd like to get a video done. We have a budget that is like this. And when a client sends me the budget directly, then it's great because then I know that if they send this amount directly to me, I know we got some room to actually leverage that up depending on what kind of services that I can provide for the client. When you're purchasing stuff for your business, I think it's important to also have a plan for why you're purchasing different things. For example, the things that I got in the background here is mainly for props, set design, 
and things that I use for several different videos, depending on what kind of video it is that I make. Running a business is about knowing how much profit you can make from something if you spend the money on purchasing something. So if you buy something for $10, how much can you refine those $10 to create a value that is $100? And once you start to figure those things out, it's gonna be way easier for you to start running a successful business. And the same thing goes with your time because your time is something that is being refined the more you do things because people start paying for your time and your experience. So when you're starting your business, it's very hard to charge for your experience that you have because that is something that takes time to build up. But the more experience that you have, the more you can also stack that in to what you're charging your clients for when you're working with them. And something that I've tried to do is try to figure out what can I do to not actively spend my time but still manage to have a business with. And one of those things is of course digital products because the more digital products that you have, that also means that you don't have to be actively working on packing the products up or shipping the products out or doing you know all the work in back end with the shipping labels and all that crazy stuff. It's one of the reasons why I'm not selling any sort of merch because I know the amount of time and work that goes into doing all of those things from when I was having my then apparel brand. But then again, as we talked about in the beginning of this video, one of the most important things is knowing that when you become your own boss, it's not gonna be you sitting in a hammock just raking in the dollars and enjoying every single moment of life. Having a successful business means that you need to take every single ounce of time that you possibly can and refine that so that you can create more money. The amount of work that I have poured in to this business of my own is insane. And if there's something that I really miss with having a, you know, ordinary job and not being a content creator and YouTuber, it is that once the workday was finished, you punched out, and that was it. When you have your own business, that is gone. At least that's the feeling that I have after running a business for 10 years. If you don't wanna run your own business and you wanna you know, do the job that you're currently doing, then by all means do that because it's totally fine as well. There's nothing that says that you have to pursue freelancing or running your own business in this world. If you are happy with where you are right now, then by all means stick to that because that is the most important thing. If you ask me, I wouldn't trade this for the world though because I love this thing. I love the constant hustle of trying to get better. Really hope that you enjoyed this video. It was sort of like just a thought that I had, uh, spitballing. I don't know if this made any sort of sense, but if it did, please do give it a thumbs up and uh, don't forget to subscribe. We'd love to see you in the next video. Peter Tefranc with you, saying goodbye.